Do you want to know more about Smash Burgers? Well, this is my top 10 tips. Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life. My name's Tom, and this is where great barbecue doesn't have to cost a fortune. Today, we're doing my top 10 Smash Burger tips. So, tip number one is using a ratio of 80 20 meat to fat. So that's making sure you've got 20% fat within your burger because if you don't use 20% fat, your meat will burn when you're doing this technique. You can go up to 25 and 30% fat and you're still going to get fantastic results, but I find 20% is just about right and it's quite easy to pick up in supermarkets or just speak to your butcher and ask them to add a bit more fat into their lean um, mix. When you're making these um, meatballs that we start off with before we smash you don't want to be packing them in too hard you want them as loose as possible so that the fat's got room to move around as this burger's being smashed down and it gives you a more of a lacy effect through the entire burger so it gives you more gnarly bits and then softer pieces so don't overwork it before you you smash it on as you can see they're, they're quite loose and then you just place it onto the griddle and smash so tip number two, we're going to talk tools. So I use a spatula, so it's quite wide. If I put my hand, it's sort of a hand's width. So I use that to smash, um, but you can use things like a plastering trowel if you can't get hold of a sturdy, wide uh, spatula. Or you can use things like a burger press. Just make sure that the burger press is completely flat on the bottom of that you don't want the ridged ones because then when you flip it over you've got ridges in the other side of your burger and you've not got so much contact point so it doesn't give you as good a burger but a really sturdy spatula these are available on amazon and um, there's loads of them about just check through the reviews to make sure that they're uh, they've got a really sturdy handle because you're going to be going to be putting a lot of pressure down on that handle um, in order to get the smash so yeah just have a look about there are plenty about Next tool, gloves. So decent quality barbecue gloves, preferably with a long piece to go up your arm. And the reason I say these is because you've got that really high heat sitting in the bottom of the barbecue and then it's coming up to the plancher and it kind of comes round the plancher. So as you're there smashing, your wrists are over the edge of where the fire is and it gets bloody hot. So you want a nice long barbecue glove or welder's glove, anything like that, just to protect you from that heat. I've done it so many times without gloves and you do end up with sore forearms. So you make sure you use gloves and you're gonna miss out on hurting yourself. And the last thing that I always use, I never used to use, but I always use now because I've had so many times of the meat sticking to the spatula where the spatula has been hot from doing um, the burger before because it's quite a quick process and if your spatula is still hot when you smash it, your meat will stick to the spatula and it ruins your burger so that is greaseproof paper so a nice big square of greaseproof paper you can place that on top of the ball and smash down so tip number three is your plancher temperature so i go between 250 and 300 degrees c somewhere around sort of 275 is best if you go hotter than that, you're just going to burn. And if you go lower than that, you're not going to get the Maillard reaction along the bottom of the burger, which is what gives you your crust. So you can um, buy an infrared uh, thermometer checker. So it has a little beam that comes out and checks the, the plancher temperature and tells you what temperature it is. Or you can just try and dial it in with your gauge. Generally, whatever your gauge is, is about where your um, plancher is sitting because it's quite conductive. So tip number four, now we're actually on to the cooking process. So the most important part of this process is when you put your meatball on, you want to put that on and you want to let that sit on the plancher for about 10 seconds before you smash. And this starts to really warm up the fats in there and it gives you a wider smash as you smash out because the fats help things spread across the plancher as you're smashing. So the most important thing to remember when you're cooking smash burgers is to only smash once. So you smash on that first side and you want to smash it for at least 10 seconds and that makes sure that you've got a really nice contact point across the bottom of the plancher and that's what's going to give you your crust. When you flip them, if you smash again, you're just going to push all of the juice out of the burger because all of the fat will then be liquid by that point 
and you're just going to push it straight out at the first point we do it everything hasn't turned to liquid so you smash once and you're still going to keep the all of the fat and the juice inside the burger if you smash twice you end up with a dry burger and no one wants a dry burger so number six so this is a little bit of a controversial tip um, because there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, smash burgers are just too thin. I like a big, thick burger. Well, you can do smash burgers as a big burger. So if you start off with your um, mince it, with a flatter bottom and more in the bowl, so this has got 150 grams in this bowl with a flat bottom and it's kind of got straighter sides so that we're going to get a, and still a, a smash out to the same size, but it's going to stay thicker by doing that. You just don't you push down, but you don't keep pushing. Once it reaches the edge of your spatula, you stop pushing and it gives you the same size as when you're using the smaller balls. But you do end up with a thicker burger and you still end up with that crust on the one side and a nice juicy burger through the middle. So yeah, try a thicker smash burger because they work really, really well. So number seven is the complete opposite to having a thicker smash burger. It is a really thin, lacy edged smash burger. So these are really simple to produce. So after you, you do your initial smash and then you pull your spatula or your um, plaster trowel, or whatever it is you're using to smash, you pull it out to the edges and you really smear the edges out. It gives you a nice lacy edged effect. And these lacy edges go really crispy while the middle stays um, nice and moist and it gives you a much more different effect and different textures across the entire burger because lacy edges are really cool. So number eight is when to flip. So I get this question quite a lot is that they don't know, but you don't know when to flip your burger. You're either flipping too early and you've not got enough crust or you're flipping too late and it's burning. So it's quite simple. The color is gonna to start to change around the outside of the burger. It's gonna to start to go turn brown as it's cooking through and you're gonna get little breakages um, within the meat and these are gonna bubble with the fat and the juices out of the meat. This is the point that you flip. When you flip, you need to make sure that you scrape down into the plancher. Take your time, work your way around the outside and then scrape through the middle. If you don't scrape down towards the plancher, then it was not worth doing it in the first place because you're not going to be taking that crust off of the plancher. You're going to be leaving it behind and you're just going to end up with a standard flat top burger. So really make sure you push down and you work at that burger to get it off. To flip it off and then as you can see, you get a really nice brown crust. On the bottom of these it gives you a nice crunchy texture on the bottom still keeping that moisture in the top so number nine is mix up your toppings so don't just stick with your standard uh, cheese and salad and things like that i always try and stick with one clear rule when i'm making any burgers and that is making sure that i've always got cheese in the burger something crisp in the burger so this can be onions or pickles or um, a iceberg lettuce, something to give you a bit of a crunch and a bit refreshing, and then something acidic. So you're going to get that from your onions, you're going to get that from your gherkins, you're going to get that from using things like hot sauce. So in these particular two burgers that I've done today, then we've got gherkins on them both for a nice bit of crunch and a bit of acidity. The cheese on there is a nice cheddar cheese, really strong farmhouse cheddar, che cheddar cheese. And then We've got a nice, beautiful barbecue sauce and good quality barbecue sauce on one and a sriracha hot sauce on the other. So just mix things up, move out of your comfort zone. If there's anything we're trying to push on this channel when it comes to burgers is moving out of your comfort zone. If you've missed any of my burgers around the world cooks, then please go and check them out because that is really going to up your burger game. And we're on to our last tip. So this is what I like to call the best of both worlds. So this footage is from an old video because when I did the, the footage for this video, I actually forgot to um, do this method. So I've managed to salvage some footage from an old video. And that is a flame grilled smash burger. So they're two completely different types of burgers, but you can mix them up. So you're gonna do your initial smash exactly the same. And then on your when you flip, you're gonna flip onto your original grill bars if you've got room or onto a plancher that has got a grill grate side so that the fat can drip through and you will get a flare up and that will flavor the bottom half 
of your burger. Now, this is an amazing way to have a smash burgers because you get that crust on the one side that you want from a smash burger, but you're still getting a flame group taste on the other side. So it is, in my opinion, the absolute best of both worlds. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life, then please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching. Cheers.